previously on Mama Cherry Soul Food Soul in the Bowl Cookbook Corona Special Giveaway to you. This is what happened the last time. Let me get to you close up. Okay, it's Mama with Cherry. You. I'm going to actually read. From cover to cover for the first birth of the restaurant. This is what you've been waiting for. Put the glasses back on. It's a kitchen nightmare. Oh, yeah. And this is a picture of my pancakes. Okay, you got them. Those are my blue blood pancakes with maple syrup. Four, so we're getting there. We're moving along. And this is our salads and fixing. So I'm going to just show you, just quickly, uh, give you an idea. This is what it looks like. We are now at one of my favorite all-time ingredients. Cornbread! Oh, yes. Here Cornbread. I am, starting without my glasses, knowing I need them. Remember, during these times of corona, I can't even get out to fix my glasses. But don't worry, I've come up with a solution. I put them on, and then I put these on over top. And it stops them from sliding on my face like it did in the second video. Okay? So, I may look a little bit strange, but hey, it ain't about how I look. It's about the words on my page. Here we go. Cornbread. So, welcome back, all my gorgeous peeps. Yes, we are moving along. <sighs> I think we are now at part six. Yeah, part six, which is our fish recipes. And I love me some fish. So sit back and we're going to get started with our chapter on fish. So let me just give you a good little show you what it's going to be. So this is what we're looking at. Fish coming your way. Oh, yeah. So, settle back, okay? It's story time with a mama. All right, here we go. Oh, guess what, guys? I have managed to finally pick up a new pair of glasses. Now, let me just explain something. This chapter on fish, I filmed this a while ago, but my computer broke. I lost all of my data, okay? Data, data, whatever, it got lost. So, um, at the time when I filmed this and the next video you're going to see, I was still wearing my little wonky glasses, my broken ones. Since I have gone out to the shops, to the chemist, to the uh, drugstore, and I have found myself another pair. So, let's hope these work so I don't be looking so silly. Oh, yes, I can see. I don't know what I look like, but I can see. So, settle back as we enter Mama's world of fish. You ready? Okay. So, our first recipe under fish is one of my favorites. It's fried catfish goujons. Fried catfish has always been a traditional soul food item. But it is fairly new to the to the UK. The meaty white flesh fish has a delicate but distinctive flavor. When it is pre prepared as goujons, tender, sweet pieces of fish, fillet coated in cornmeal, children seem to prefer it to the processed fish fingers. Hey, and why not? It's the real thing. You might have searched for catfish, but when you did, you couldn't find it. You know, and so you know you'd be very unhappy. But a good fishmonger will be able to get hold of it. Alternatively, some oriental shops sell frozen catfish fillets under the name of Pangaris, spelled P-A-N-G-A-S-I-U-S. -S. And if you can't find any catfish, then cod and haddock also make good alternatives. Nowadays in the supermarkets, it's known as bassa. Okay, so if you look for some bassa, B-A-S-A, -A, that's what you want. It's catfish. I think they just changed the name because people didn't like the name of the catfish because it is an ugly looking fish, but it's delicious. Here we go. What you're going to need. 
for, you're going to need 75 grams of cornmeal, 35 grams of plain flour. You don't have to add the plain flour if you have a gluten intolerance, just stick with the cornmeal. Pinch of salt and pepper. Of course, some of mamas love dust. Um, four fresh or frozen catfish fillets skinned and then cut into strips. Some 100 millimeter, uh, milliliters of vegetable oil for frying and some pineapple salsa. I gave you that recipe earlier. Go back to the other um, video and get it because it's a winner. Combine all of the dry ingredients in a bowl. Wash the fish and then coat it in the dry mixture. Pour the oil into a large frying pan and place it over a moderate heat. Put the fish in the pan, skin side down, if you're going to be cooking it with the skin. But remember, for the fillets, it's best to take that skin off. And cook it. Cook over a moderate heat for one and a half to two and a half minutes per side. Three to five minutes for whole fish um, fillets. Serve with pineapple salsa, hush puppies, and some Hoppin' Johns and coleslaw. Bye, y'all. Catfish gooshards. This is what it looks like. Lovely jubbly. Okay, let's move on. My mother doesn't like fish. Now, this was written when my mother was still alive. She has since passed on. But at the time, my mother doesn't like fish. And as a result, we never got to eat it at home. Instead, we had to go to Andy's and Uncle Albert's house down the street. Uncle Albert and other men folk would take my brothers and occasionally the girls fishing or crabbing in Delaware at the weekends. And on their return, we'd have a big fish fry up. If it was summer um, and we were in luck because we'd be down south at my grandparents' house and my granddaddy loved some fish. I've known him to eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's funny because I love catfish now. Can't get enough of it. But as growing up, uh-uh, wouldn't go near it. They're such an ugly fish with the whiskers. And I can remember being chased around the yard once by one of the older boys flinging a big piece of ugly, slimy, scary fish at me. <laughs> yeah! Okay. Now, Cajun-style catfish gumbo. Oh, yeah, we're going to gumbo it now. Once you discover the beauty of catfish, you will soon begin to try to use it in a whole variety of dishes, adding it to gumbo, as stews are often referred into in the South. Turns it into a one-pot meal, or you can serve it as a fish soup to start a meal. If you can't get catfish, you can substitute it with a nice meaty piece of cod or haddock. Okay, you're going to need for this gumbo. 120 grams of butter, 100 grams of plain flour, one onion finely chopped, two celery stalks finely chopped, one red, green, and um, pepper diced, two cloves of garlic diced and chopped up, one 400 gram can of chopped tomatoes, half teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of black pepper, some chili flakes, and of course, mama's love dust. Um, 475 milliliters of water or vegetable stock, one can of sweet corn drained, uh, 100 grams of mushroom sliced, 500 grams of fresh or frozen okra trimmed and sliced lengthways, and four fresh or frozen catfish. Melt the butter in a deep frying pan, stir in the flour, and cook over a low heat for a minute or two to make a smooth roux. Add the onion, celery, diced peppers, and garlic and cook over a low heat for four to five minutes until softened. Stir in the tomatoes, salt, pepper, and chili flakes. Cajun seasoning and water and then cover and simmer for about 15 minutes. Add the sweet corn, mushrooms, and okra and continue to cook for a further 15 minutes. Lay the fish fillets on top of the vegetables and simmer for another five minutes until the fish is done. Break the fish up into chunks and stir it in to, and stir to combine it in with the other ingredients. Try not mashing it up too much and serve it over some plain rice. Yummy, yummy, yum. Let's move on. 
Okay, here we go. One of my favorites. Mama's Spicy Fish Cakes. I love a fish cake. And y'all know, if you go back and look at my videos, I got lots of videos showing you a variety of different ways of making a fish cake. Fish cakes are quick and easy to make and a great way to use up leftovers. If you have leftover cooked potatoes and fish, you can mix them together with some seasonings. And hey, presto, spice up fish cakes in a jiffy. Now this is going to make you about 20 fish cakes, so let's get fish caking. Four medium potatoes, peeled and cut into chunks. 300 grams of fresh or frozen catfish. Fillets skinned or cod, cut up, use whatever you like. One onion finely chopped. One handful of fresh ginger, of fresh coriander. One teaspoon of my love dust. A half a teaspoon of dried chili flakes or a fresh chili chopped up. But be careful, mind, it depends on how hot you want it. Two tablespoons of some mild mustard, American mustard. One teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of ground black pepper and some oil for frying. And for the coating, you want 100 grams of cornmeal, teeny bit of uh, maybe uh, 50 grams of plain flour, some salt, and some pepper. Here's how you're going to do it. Cook the potatoes in boiling water um, until tender. Then remove from the pan with a slotted spoon and place in a bowl, reserving the cooking water. Mash them thoroughly. Cut the catfish into smaller pieces. Put them in the hot potato cooking water. Cover the pan and leave for about three minutes. The fish should poach in the heat of the water. If it needs a little bit more cooking time, simply return the pan back to the heat and bring it back sim and just begin to simmer it. Then remove it, okay, and leave it, un um, leave it uncovered, okay? We don't want the fish to go tough. Drain off the water. Um, and if you like, you could freeze it in a nice tray or use it um, because you can make that fish into kind of like some fish stock. Leave the fish to, until it is cool enough to handle, then add it to the mashed potatoes. With the onion, coriander, Cajun seasoning, chili, mustard, and salt and pepper. Gently stir together. Mix the cornmeal and flour together on a shallow plate and season with salt and pepper. With flour at hand, shape the fish mixture in to make medium-sized patties. And then gently coat them with the cornmeal. Place on a flour plate and put them into the fridge just to chill a little bit. And that just helps them to hold together. And also it means you can do this early in the day, put them away, and then just prior to when you're ready to eat them, because they are best hot, although they're delicious cold, then you cook them. Pour enough oil into a large frying pan, coat the base, and place it over a medium heat. When the oil is hot in the fish cakes, add the fish cakes in batches, okay? Until they are golden brown, crispy, and then turn them over. Serve with some sweet chili, um, with some, it go, they go great with um, sweet chili sauce, okay? Here's what they look like. Yeah, looks good. Oh, Lord have mercy. We're moving on to some fish jambalaya. Oh, yeah. Fish jambalaya. All right, here we go. This is a very similar to the meat version, um, which I'm going to be reading out to you later, okay? Um, but it uses a wonderful assortment of fish. My favorites are cod, smoked haddock, catfish, snapper, salmon, king prawns. But you can, of course, use whatever fish you like, okay? All of the fillets should be cut into large, nice pieces, about six chunks each. Make them nice and chunky because when it cooks, it's going to break down. And what you don't want it to just be fish flakes throughout. You want to be able to bite into a piece of fish. Okay, it's quite long list, so... Get your ears perked up and have a listen, but don't forget you can also read it. You're going to need, I say about, okay, so it's approximately, it depends on how big of a dish you're going to make. 
So for this one, I'm going with 200 grams of smoked haddock, 200 grams of cod, 200 grams of catfish, the juice of one lemon, three tablespoons of my love dust, my Cajun seasoning, three tablespoons of vegetable or olive oil, two onions, one roughly cut, one thinly sliced, one red, green, and yellow pepper, half of each, diced, the other half cut into strips, one teaspoon of crushed garlic, one tablespoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of cumin seeds. These are optional, but they add lovely flavor, okay, and a little bit of crunch to the dish. One teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, one chili, preferably a scotch bonnet, seeded and finely chopped or left whole, okay? If you leave it whole, then you're able to remove it. You'll get that flavor, but not so much intense heat. Um, you also need 400 grams of easy cook American long grain white rice, one teaspoon of turmeric. You need 450 grams of mixed, mixed veg. I find it's just quick and easy. Get yourself a bag of frozen mixed veg. Works perfect. And 1.2 liters of water or fish stock. Some gumbo filet if you can find it. And 500 grams of peeled raw king prawns or crayfish. Skin the fish fillets and cut them into large um, pieces. Sprinkle with some lemon juice and one tablespoon of Cajun seasoning over them and set it aside to marinate. Now this lemon juice is going to be it's going to begin to cook it slightly, but it gives it such good flavor, okay? Especially with my love dust. Place a large saucepan over a medium heat and add one tablespoon of the oil, followed by the chopped onions, diced peppers, and crushed garlic. Stir in one tablespoon of the remaining Cajun seasoning and half the cumin plus the salt and pepper. Cover and cook over a low heat for about five minutes until the onion and peppers have softened. The spices will begin to give off their lovely fragrances and coat the pan, which will enhance the dish. I call this seasoning the pot. Oh, yes. Now stir in half of the marinade fish plus the chopped fresh chili. Remember that the Scotch Bunny chilies are very hot. If you have any cuts, they're going to burn you. So if you're worried about the heat level, remember, leave the chili whole, add it to the dish with the water of the stock, and remove it after about 10-15 minutes. Add the rice and stir well. Then add the turmeric and the remaining Cajun seasoning and the cumin. Stir everything together until the rice is fully coated. Then add the mixed vegetables and the water or the fish stock. Bring to a simmer and add the gumbo filet. Simmer and cover, simmer uncovered over a low heat for about 20 minutes. When the rice is swollen and is almost cooked, add the prawns or crayfish. Cook for a further 5-10 minutes until the shellfish is cooked. Adjusting the flavor. Now, you may always add your prawns or shellfish towards the end. Excuse me, because you don't want to overcook them. Because they'll go like rubber, and we don't eat rubber. Now, for the final ingredient, the, uh, the stir-fried fish. Okay, that fish that I had you stir-fried, we're now going to add that to the, back, to the pot. Heat the remaining two tablespoons of oil. Add the remaining marinated fish and stir-fry for five minutes. Add the sliced onions and peppers and mushrooms until the fish is cooked through and the vegetables are tender. Place it on top of the jambalaya and serve immediately. Okay. Now, it is so funny because when we were younger, my baby brother, Kurt, only ate peanut butter sandwich, peanut butter and jelly, and cold breakfast cereal. I ain't lying. It was hard. I don't know how my mother survived trying to feed that child. Seriously. That's all he ever ate. My mother was at her wit's end trying to make sure he just didn't melt away. Somehow he managed to survive on just that. Until he discovered that he loved the one thing my mother hated and never had in the house. Fish. Who would have thought that Kurt would take such a huge culinary jump in his taste. 
He's no longer a baby, and his love of seafood continues to amaze me. The pan-fried jerk snapper is one of his favorites. And the good thing about it is whenever I go home, I will take my children, my daughters, when they were younger, home back to the America, we were guaranteed that if we wanted some fish, I'd say, ring your Uncle Kurt. And they did. And he would take them out. And not just what he would. He'd get all the fancy stuff. I love going with my brother. So here is my pan fried jerk red snapper. Fish is always number one option for my baby brother Kurt. And he is keen to try out all different sorts. He loves whiting, sardines, catfish. And although he doesn't lean towards spicy food. He can't get enough of my stuffed jerk snapper. This recipe is a great summer dish and is nice served hot or cold. And it can be altered to accommodate almost any other type of fish. Just as long as it's meaty enough to be sliced and stuffed. This is great when served alongside Hoppin' John's, fried plantains, or my sweet potato salad. What you're going to need is one tablespoon of my Cajun Jerk Seasoning. Okay, and two, red, two to four red snapper fillets. For the stuffing, you're going to need two tape teaspoons of my Cajun jerk seasoning. That's the wet curd Cajun jerk, and I've given you that recipe, so go back and look up that recipe. Then you're going to need a cornmeal coating. Cornmeal, 75 grams of cornmeal, 35 grams of plain flour, salt, pepper, and Love dust, baby, yeah, yeah. Ow! and some oil to cook it in. So, rub the Cajun jerk seasoning into the fish fillets. Make an incision into each fillet and stuff about two teaspoons of my wet jerk seasoning into it. Combine all of the ingredients for the seasoning corn cornmeal coating in the in a bowl. Take each fillet and coat in the dry mixture. Pour enough oil into a large frying pan, cover the base, and place it over a moderate heat. If you prefer, you can mix the coating and simply cook the fish on a griddle pan for three to five minutes each side, depending on the thickness. And if you're cooking a lot of fish and it's easier, you can roast it whole in a hot oven for about eight to ten minutes. And this is what you're going to come out with. Have a look at this. Oh, yes. Mm, yummy, yummy. You know that looks good. You know you want to eat some. Okay. Moving on along. Here we go. Ooh. Black and Cajun fish. And this can be done with chicken fillets as well. Black and. Whoa, yeah. Here we go. Blackening. Does not mean burning your food. So let me repeat that line. Blackening does not mean burning your food. Okay? It's a way of seasoning. If you rub some Cajun or dry jerk seasoning over fish or meat, then quickly fry it in melted butter over the highest heat as you can possibly manage, it will sear the spices and create a crust, producing the blackening effect. Don't worry. If you can't get the crust to form at the first time, take some time to taste a little practice. If your meat or fish is more than 2.5 centimeters thick, you will need to finish it off in an oven to ensure it is cooked thoroughly and properly. Any firm, fresh fish will work as long as it is at at least 1.2 centimeters thick. Try red snapper, salmon, tuna, shark, etc. Remember that the frying pan will become very hot, so take care and use protective gloves if necessary. The melted butter could flame up, so never, ever leave that plain un uh, pan unattended. Cook no more than two pieces of fish or meat at a time and season immediately before placing them into the pan. If cooking more than one batch of fish or meat, wipe the pan clean with a paper towel after each one so that the seasoning doesn't build up and give the food a burnt rather than blackened effect. There is a difference. You're going to need three tablespoons of butter, two 200 gram fish fillets or chicken, two tablespoons of my 
Mama seasonings love dust. Melt the butter in a frying pan over a medium heat and add fish or chicken. Turn, turning to coat it in butter on both sides. Now take the fillets out of the pan and quickly coat them in some Cajun seasoning. Return them to the pan and turn the heat up. And if you're using, using fish, cook for about three to four minutes on each side, depending on the thickness. If you're using chicken, cook for three to four minutes on each side, then finish it off in the oven. Preheated 180, okay, gas mark for, four, for eight to ten minutes. And you can add more butter if necessary. Now this next one, oh my God, crab cakes. I've got a video on this, guys. I recommend you go back and have a look at the crab cake recipe. In the summer months, my brother Craig and I were privileged ones because as the two eldest children, we were allowed to go crabbing in Delaware or Maryland with our neighbors. We used to have so much fun. We had to leave in the early hours of the morning while it was still dark so that we could arrive at daybreak when the waters were calm. We would lower our lines into the water and sit on the dock of the bay, eating saltine crackers and sandwiches and waiting for our bite on our lines. When crab was caught, that's when the fun began. Because to tell the truth, we both loved going, but deep down inside, we were afraid of them crabs. Part of our job was to place them into the large bucket and make sure they didn't escape. As a result, we often were nipped by their claws. Oft, although I didn't like them, I would take pride in chasing my brother around with a live crab trying to nip him. <laughs> Those were the good old days when children knew how to entertain themselves. So, you're in lockdown worrying what to do with the kids? Just get some crabs. Give them to them. Don't run around. Nah, I'm joking. But, plan. Kids just need to learn how to play. What you're going to need for these fish cake, for these crab cakes, 500 grams of fresh crab meat, or you can use a tin, and one onion finely chopped, one egg, one teaspoon of my love dust, some Worcestershire sauce, teaspoon of mild mustard, chopped parsley, about two teaspoons, half a teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of lemon juice, and 100 grams of fresh breadcrumbs, or you could use some cornbread that's crumbled up to make your own breadcrumbs and some vegetable oil for frying. Put all of the ingredients except for the vegetable oil in a large bowl and combine. If the mixture is too dry, add a touch of milk, just so that it is moist enough to form into patties. Gently shape into about 12 patties and place on a tray lined with greaseproof paper. Place in the refrigerator and chill for at least an hour. This will help them to hold together and keep their shape. When you're ready to cook them, place a large frying pan on the heat and add enough oil to cover the base. When the oil is hot, add the crab cakes and cook for three to four minutes each side until brown. Serve with rice, potatoes, or salad. Yum, yum a dum dum. Roma's coming to the end of this chapter. Two more to go. Here we go. Garlic and chili tomato king prawns. Oh, Lord of mercy, just saying that one makes me hungry. I love prawns, whether peeled or in their shells. Grilled, baked, fried, any way they come. Serve this lively dish as a starter or as a main course with rice, noodles, or salad. What you want? One kilo. Of king prawns peeled and deveined, one head of garlic chopped, roughly chopped, one teaspoon of my Cajun seasoning, four tablespoons of olive oil, one onion diced, one tablespoon of dried chili flakes, two tomatoes diced, and the juice of a lemon. Place the peeled prawns in a bowl with the garlic, Cajun seasoning, a tablespoon of olive oil, and mix well, and leave to marinate for about an hour. Heat the remaining olive oil in a large frying pan and add the onions and chili flakes. When the onions begin to cook, add the prawns and garlic and quickly stir together. Cook for about two minutes until the prawns begin to go pink. 
Then add the chopped tomatoes and squeeze the lemon juice over them. Cook for another minute. Remove from the heat and serve immediately. Make sure you're first in the line because I'm telling you now, they're a winner. They're going to go down real quick. And this, to end our chapter on fish, there's only one way to do it. And that's with drunken prawns. You heard me. Drunken prawns. We gonna get boozy. Sit back and get boozy. This dish can be found in the deep south and is served on the Caribbean islands. I usually serve it at the I used to serve it at the restaurant on special occasions. Many recipes use beer, but I prefer to use a nice dark rum. I figured if you're gonna get them prawns drunk, then do it with rum. Recently. I do it with tequila as well. Oh, yes, I do. Needless to say, this is not one of my family recipes. No. My mother turned her nose up every time I say that idea of drunken anything. She doesn't drink. But she shies away from anything on a menu containing alcohol. But that's her, not me. Bring it on, I say. What you need. One kilo of large prawns, peeled and deveined. 100 milliliters of dark rum, 150 pineapple juice, two tablespoons of finely chopped garlic, two, one tablespoon of chili sauce or Tabasco sauce, 100 grams of fresh coriander chopped, one teaspoon of my Cajun seasoning, and some soft dark brown sugar, about a tablespoon. This is one of the easiest dishes in the world to make, trust me. Simply place all of the ingredients except for the sugar in a bowl and leave to marinate for at least an hour. Then pour the lot into a shallow frying pan and gently bring to the boil or just kind of cook it up. Cook for a few minutes until the prawns are firm and pink. Then remove them from the pan and set aside. Add the brown sugar to the juices and simmer until the mixture has reduced and thickened. Add another splash of rum and return the prawns to the pan, tossing them in their drunken juices and serve them on their own over a bed of rice. Okay, so that is the end of this one. Here we go. So this is our chapter six. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe and I will see you on the next episode because coming up next, guys, get ready. We're about to hit meat. Oh, yeah. We're going to get meaty in the next episode. See ya. Stay in. Stay safe. Um, if you are still under quarantine, follow the rules. If this is being viewed years and years from now, because this is 2020, we made it. <laughs> Stay safe. Fingers, I'm used to this kind of stuff, okay? Use a spoon.